Dr. David Klee has over 30 years experience as both a teacher of the flute and as a professional musician. He has performed in all kinds of musical organizations, ranging from classical orchestras to heading his own jazz group, the Jazz Express. With these Pro Minute video series, Dr. Klee will share some of his secrets with you on how to become a better flutist. Hello, my name is Dr. David Klee, and welcome to another Pro Minute video. Today we're going to look at the Sarabanda and the Rigadon that's in the solo folio for flute. This is a paired piece where the first part, the Largo, is written by Archangelo Corelli. And then the second part, the Rigadon, is written by George Frederick Handel. And so we're going to look at the Largo first. The Largo should be about one, two, three, and one, nice and slow, full values, a lot of deep breathing from the diaphragm. So everything is full value. Uh, if you have vibrato, you definitely want to use your vibrato. In measure seven, as you can see on your screen, there is a crescendo, day crescendo, just a little bit of a push. Da di da da da. So you want to add a little push to it, and then backing down when you get into measure eight. It's marked mezzo piano, so it's a little louder, just a little bit. And I like to think just a little more energy, a little more excitement. Now, typically in measure 10, we have what are called Baroque trills. A Baroque trill is done differently than today with uh, modern band music uh, trills. Back then, you want to prepare the trill, execute the trill, terminate the trill, and then you move on. And what that means is you want to start on the trilled note. So if you, on measure 10, if you trill a G, what is it you trill to? G to A natural. So what you're going to do, you're going to start on the A, go to the G, then you trill the G, then you stop on the G, then you go to the F sharp. So it'll sound like... I'll do it again. So if I do just measure 10, I'm going to do it real slow. So you heard me start on the A, go to the G, trill the G, stop on the G, and then go to the F sharp. I know it's in the blink of an eye, but after a while, if you do it slow several times, it'll start becoming more natural. Alrighty, so now I'm going to start a major nine and do both. Okay, now measure 11 and 12, it's the same thing. So measure 12, your trill, your note to trill on is an F sharp, so where do you go to? You go F sharp to G natural. Well, fortunately, finger -wise, fingering wise, that's an easy thing to do. You just, just your third finger right hand. So it's really easy. So I'll do both. I'll do it again. Now, there are some shortcuts, I'll see. What you could try, you know, you have, you have two F sharps on your flute. You have third finger F sharp, you have second finger F sharp. Now, second finger F sharp is a weaker sound. So if at all possible, we always want to use our third finger, the trill. But sometimes it gets a little hairy to try to do that. And so if you can get away with it without it sounding too bad, like I'll demonstrate the two and you'll hear it. See, the second one doesn't sound as good. But if you're trilling it, 
you really don't hear the grossness out of that second fingering. So you can get by. So the bottom line is, when you go to measure 12, you could do a G, second finger F sharp, trill. And then you just add the first finger for the E and back to the F sharp, or what I teach my students to do, they can use the second finger on the F sharp trill, go to E, when they go to, to the F sharp note on B3, on, I'm sorry, the half note on B2 and 3, I just, they play the real F sharp, the primary F sharp. So, and it works very well. Okay, so let's move on. Now, measures 13 and 14, we have a crescendo up to a fortissimo, not fortissimo, a forte. So we want to really build some energy there. I'll do it again. Okay, so what am I doing? When we get to measure 15, this is a, one of the heavyweight uh, Baroque trills you want to do. So they've got it written out, but you, you want to execute it. So if you go to B2, you want to start on the D, then you go to the C sharp, then you use this first, the C sharp trill key, which is first finger. So you finger a real D, because you don't want to start on a trill D. It sounds really gross. So you want a real D. Then you go to C sharp. Then you trill it. Then you stop. Then you go to the B. So that measure would sound like. I'll do it again. Alrighty. So that's how you would do that. Now measure 17. We have. Pianissimo. Oh. Now, the hard thing about pianissimo for a young flute is they, they use less air, but what happens, they have their, their teeth closed, and it's really hard for them to play soft and or sound really clean. What I like to do, an old teacher taught me, is uh, the softer you play, the more you open your teeth. And by the time I'm right there, I'm a finger's width between my teeth the whole time. Now, what happens if I don't open my teeth? It sounds like this. Sounds really morbid and weak and not clear. Now, if I open my teeth, I can play just a saw, but a whole lot cleaner. Massive difference, isn't there? So that enables me to play all that soft. So let's go to 18. So 18, again, we have a trill. So what you're going to do is start on the real D, go to C, use your first finger trill key to trill it, stop on the C, and do the B, C. So it'll sound like... And now measure 20, the same way. So I'll measure 20. I'm going to start on a real C, go to the B, and then I use the trill B. The trill B is what? It's your thumb, which is easy. So then I do a real C, real C, go to B, trill the B, and go to A. Make sense? Yeah. Now, measures 21, 22, we have a massive crescendo going into fortissimo. And so now, measure 23, uh, what we do there, look at the trill. You're going to start on a real G, go to F sharp. Trill the F sharp, stop on the F sharp, then you go to E. So if I do the whole measure, and that's how you would play that. 
Okay, so then that would repeat, do all cover all the dynamics. Now, when you take it the second time and you get to uh, measure 23, the second time through that repeat, I would slow it down just a hair going into the second ending, which is measure 25. And what will happen, you're giving just a hint of a finalis again. So. And wait just a second. And then just enough so your pianist could turn a page if they have to and for you to take a nice breath. Then we go into uh, the Rigadon. Now the Rigadon, written by Mr. Handel, uh, I've had students who take this in a moderate to a fast four, or they take it into a slow moderate two. And I would say the younger you are, the more you might be tempted to do it in a modern fast four. So if you do it in four, da 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 something like that would be fun. You know, if you're more advanced, you could take it in maybe a true cut time. And it's not going to be that fast. You know, something like that. Okay? Now, stylistically, you notice the staccatos, I don't play so much short as separated. Ta, ta, ta. Ta 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 ta. I do something like that, and I really like that. Now you notice on major one there's accents, so I put a little more weight on those. Maybe even a little bit of weight, and maybe even a hint of separation. You know, something like that. Alrighty. So, you notice that whole first section is forte, so you want to be strong, vibrant, and really enjoy. Now, when you get to measure nine, you notice pickups to nine, the dynamic marking is piano. So now you want to play soft. Now, but down low like that, I would think open your teeth, flatten firm the armature, and keep that diaphragm supporting your sound. So that way you don't go flat and or sound real weak. Now when you get into major nine, there's a little squiggly line. And the best way to interpret that, that means you just trill that note one time. That's how I do it. Alrighty, so that's how I would play that. Follow the, the, the separation of the staccato notes and things like that. Now, when you get into major 13, it's loud again. And then guess what? Major 6, going into 17, we're back to piano because we're using that same theme we did on major 9. So we have that little squiggly line. Now what happens here, when you get to measure 20, it goes, going into 21, it's forte. What I like to do, I like to crescendo that line going, da 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 da. So I crescendo that going into 21, and then I just do all the same, the separation of the half notes, a little more weight, the same kind of styling, and then I go all the way to measure to measure 24. That repeats back to measure nine, you do all the same things. Now the second time through, when I get to measure 23, I want to put what I call a finalis. At the end of this, I want to make it sound like it's final. So what I do, I slow that down a little bit and make it a little bit more grand. And I might even hold that dot a half note out a little bit. And the pianist is watching you, and you'll know, you know, you'll cut the pianist off when you're ready to stop that tone. Another thing you could do on 24 is put in a lower neighbor. A lower neighbor, a lower neighbor is when right, right before major 24, you play a D sharp. And what I like to do, 
I like to think on uh, measure 24, I like to go E, D sharp, D. So. I like to do something like that. And that's just part of the ornamentation you could add. Make sure, make sure if you do something like that, and this is a, a legit solo and ensemble competition, make sure it's in, you put it in the copy you're going to give the judge. That way the judge will know this has been added and you're going to play that. Or what will happen sometimes, you'll play it and the judge will go, well, I don't see it in music. That must have been a mistake. And you don't want that. Okay, so this kind of gives you an idea how to play the Sarabanda and how to play the Rigodon. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with this. And you'll feel very baroque while you'll do it. So I think that'll set you off and get you going. Don't, you know, feel free to watch my videos on this or my performances when I've done them. And this will give you an idea, you know, what the overall styling would sound like along with the accompaniment. Alrighty, so uh, I think you're on your way. And until next time, this is Dr. David Clay, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.